relaxing into the arms of the entourage of Kryon. And breathe into that spaciousness of the love that surrounds us and brings us together, old souls, as family once again. And as you gently follow your breathing, enter into that space inside your body. And experience the space below you where your feet are connected to the earth and the space above you where your crown chakra reaches into divine consciousness. and the space around you. Feel yourself simply suspended between heaven and earth and the peace of the love that is here. And let that love just captivate you. and let the breath suspend you with your heart right at the center. The light of love shining out and shining in as you embrace your own magnificence, your own sacredness, Greetings, dear ones. I am Kryon of Magnetic Service. The beauty of the human being is epitomized in that which is divine. And more and more of your cellular structure is being saturated with that which is from my side of the veil. It's the side of the veil where you are not 3D. In corporeal form, you must separate in order to exist. On my side of the veil, there is what we would call a sameness, where although there may be trillions of what you would call soul entities to us, there is one unified thought, the oneness of spirit. And we've spoken of this before. But it affects that which is common sense regarding channeling. What you are hearing here is my partner's ability to open a portal so that his higher self will come in in a way that is not typical and speak to you. And yet it's not the higher self of one soul. I just told you there is a oneness on the other side of the veil. When he sits in the chair to channel, he brings in all of us. <laughs> Your higher self is like that on the other side of the veil. It is combined with all of the, the other souls on the planet. The area that you have which you are developing, dear human being, is compassion for others. You don't have to know them because you already do. Here is an elevated thought for you as we discuss what we came to discuss today. Welcome to 2015. I want to talk to you today in a sweet way, benevolent way, encouraging way. But before we begin, what do you think of it? Is it real or is it not? I'll say that every time. There are those who will say it's just a man in the chair. And then there are those who are sensitives who will know there's more. 
They'll see the colors around the chair, in the chair. They'll see the auric presence of those you cannot see but only sense. You'll know that there is an entourage which has dispersed among you. Some of you will feel physically the hand of God upon your shoulder. So as you listen, you will know that all is well, and it's correct, and it's proper, and there is love afoot. I don't want any of you to ponder your age at the moment, none of you. The young ones who've been told they're not old enough, the old ones who've been told they're too old. For none of that is so. We see you as ageless because you are, a part of the creation because you are, and here for a purpose because you are. I want you to see this as a beautiful thing. Channeling is not odd, unusual, or spooky. <laughs> it actually represents a conduit that all of you have and could activate easily if your DNA was working at a higher percentage. The lessons of today's lecture from my partner were about the evolution you're starting to see. He only gave you a piece of it. I want to talk to you about this year. I want to talk to you about the energies of the year. I want to talk to you a little bit of what some of you would call prophecy and it is not of what is coming and what the potentials we see are based upon what is happening today. Do you understand the common sense of this? If you were able to see a bigger picture, you would be guided perhaps in a different way. If you are on a road and can only see that which is directly in front of you, you might be mystified when you come to the fork. However, if you were a bird in the air and you were looking down on the land, you'd see where each one of the fork led to. This is the difference between the human being yesterday and tomorrow. For you are developing the ability intuitively of knowing which road to take. It's not a mystery. It's not odd. If you would look at who you are and understand that your soul pieces are within you and also without you, that is to say they are above you, they are in, in, in what you would call that etheric area, you'd understand that they're always an overview looking down, trying its best to advise you on what to do. I want to talk about 2015. I want to talk about energy. In order to give you this sweet message, not a long one, I have to talk about energy. There was a time, if you talked about energy to a human being, it meant one thing, not another. Physical energy. You have somebody on a treadmill, they're creating energy. They may be storing it in kinetics. You talk about the physics of energy. That's not what we're talking about. I'm talking about an energy that is there, that some of you recognize it is there, and you cannot define it because you don't have the tools. You can't measure it yet, but you know it's there. We have spoken of this over and over you know that there's energy in love, but you can't measure it, but you know it's there. <laughs> I want to talk about the energy of consciousness. Everything has energy. <laughs> Kinds of energy that you don't know. The very calendar on your wall, because it has numbers on it, has energy. A kind that you haven't really studied or would not know about, but it's there, laying in wait as a tool, as a help. What you're not taught is everything relates to everything. Those 
who spend time in nature know what I'm speaking of. First of all, they see the cycle of life. They're aware of what humans might think are inappropriate things that go on with animals. The very word, Mother Nature. They're, motiv- they're aware of the, of the beauty of it, of the cycle of life which creates more life. There's energy there. I ask you, if you are one who spends time in nature, do you feel the energy? And how would you measure it? And I'm going to ask you this, is it benevolent? (laughs) And the answer is, oh yeah. So much so, you want to go back. Some of you like the ocean, and you will sit and watch the water. And after a period of time, someone will say, you haven't spoken in a long time, what are you thinking? And your answer will be, I have no idea. (laughs) You're just absorbing the energy of the ocean. There There is this kind of energy everywhere. I, I start this channel this way for, for a common sense reason. That if you understand where I'm going and what I'm talking about, you'll understand there's energy that we can sense that is coming. 2015, to you, is the beginning of a calendar year. Now it's measured for you in a way that the ancients gave you, that makes sense. The seasons align, the days align, you know what to expect. It's linear, it's three-dimensional. And as you might imagine, it's not the way we measure time. So how would spirit measure dispensations, time, consciousness, new energy, If we are not on a calendar year, as you are, and we're not, how does it work? It's measured by the stars. It's measured by the energy of the actual land. It is measured in so many ways that you're not aware of. But instead of a calendar with squares and days, we have energy without numbers. And the energy is what then gives us the dispensations, not the calendar. And we talk about that now of what is next. Dear ones, there's an energy of consciousness that is not measurable to you, but to us it is palatable. We know what it is. We see it. It's happening right now to you in your civilization in your earth it is starting to shift it is starting to change if I could suspend reality for a moment and you could remember everything I know you would remember you've seen it before you would remember it's the beginning of a wave You'd remember that the position you are in the galaxy knows you and you know it. Where the planets are and the sun is in its endurance cycle knows who you are and you know it. You are allied with the energy of the cosmos in a very profound way. And the irony of all of this is that the ancients on this planet knew it and you've lost it. <laughs> And we ask you to renew the alliance. And you will begin to understand again energy. Physics is interesting to some and not to others. And so I will only mention it yet again for a moment. Energy. It is a known fact that the multidimensional energy called light 
can be in several forms, two of which you see. It can be in a wave or a particle. And how it makes that designation is very interesting. Because if it is not being observed by a human being, it is a wave. And when you observe it, dear one, it becomes a particle. So you have a multi-dimensional force, which is energy all by itself, light, which decides to change if you look at it. This is raw physics. And no one understands it. Now I'll tell you why and yet again. It is the energy of the human being's consciousness which is profound. When you have attention on light, it knows you're looking and changes. And the physicists of the world know of what I speak. It is the first proof over and over, time and time again, with the same experiments, that consciousness is multidimensional, measurable, has a field, and you can direct it. That's energy. So I want to talk to you about the energy of numbers, the most misunderstood of all of the energies, for it seems to be static. A number on a page, whether it's printed or written, is supposed to have an energy. It is not that which is on the page that has the energy, dear one. It's the concept of it, written in any language, in any form, that has an energy of conceptualness, which then gives you a message. And it's complex. Because one number that stands alone on a page may have one energy. A number which is surrounded by numbers will have another based upon what we will call influential energies around it. Complex. But they all have numbers. All of this leads you to 2015. <laughs> I want to give you the energy of what we see. The numerology of the year is in two parts. The first part is the year that we see that it is. And it has nothing to do with your calendar. It's easy. It's year two. <laughs> After 2012, you went through a recalibration year, which is one. 2014, two, three, four, five. We're looking at year two because 2013 really didn't count. Not really. It is the reason we told my partner, don't have a light conference. It doesn't count. The year itself had no energy. It was scrambled. It brought upon things you didn't expect. It recalibrated so much. 2014 became year one. This is our counting based upon energy of consciousness. To make it easy, we will ally this with your calendar. And we will say for you, year two is 2015. So let us first look at the two. Then let's look at the sum of 2, 0, 1, 5. Then I want to return to the 2. Very simple, very basic. The energy of the 2 when it stands alone and the concept of it, especially when you're looking at a time frame, 2 in a calendar, means duality. Now, how do you take one word called duality and then project it into a prophecy of the energy of what the year is? And that is not hard. Let me just tell you what it means, old soul. Heightened, sharpened duality is going to bring this in focus to you. 
the difference between dark and light in your life will be heightened. The things that do not need to be there, old thinking, will start to be seen as old thinking. The things that are new and the potentials that you are learning about will start to manifest themselves as light. The hope for the future will begin to solidify in your mind no matter what you think about what you see on the planet. You will start to weigh the things in a different light and that is the spiritual one and not the one you see on the news. You will start to differentiate what belongs in your life and what does not. The very thinking that you have, wrong thinking, right thinking, will start to shift and you will realize you're becoming wiser. Perhaps the, the guidance of your thought will, will no longer be action-oriented but compassion-oriented. And you'll make changes as you need to. It's a two-year. Now that's for you. How does it apply to civilization? Because it doesn't just sit there for the light worker. It's for the planet, year two. And we'll get back to that in a moment. It's good news, isn't it? Isn't it what you've been waiting for? A clearer perception of the demarcation of the duality. It's not all mixed up. You don't have to wonder what's right. You don't know what's right. 2015. When you add these numbers together, which is the process in order to get the sum of the energy and the meaning, it becomes an 8. 8 is an interesting number for it shows you the power of infinity. The double loop that never ends. An energy that does not stop because it meets a straight line. But that can continue and continue and continue. This is a sign of the year. That besides that which heightens duality, you have the meaning of the eight, which is manifestation. Things that you manifest... Don't get manifested and then stop. The eight is the figure of the infinity. Whatever you manifest remains and continues. Some have said that the eight means to them abundance. It does. But perhaps the abundance is not what you thought. What about an abundance of love? Some of you, this is important. What about an abundance of peace? Or oh, you don't worry about it anymore. How many of you are consumed with thoughts that keep you awake about things that you cannot control but you worry about? You, your health, your children, your government, that which is around you, the world in general. You know what? You don't have to do any of that. <laughs> what if you had an abundance of peace? You could take a deep breath and say, thank you, God, that I am part of it all and that it's changing. Let me do my part. Thank you for this beautiful sleep. Good night. <laughs> and that's it. In the morning you awaken and you realize you didn't worry at all. Worry comes from survival, fear, instinct. This is an energy you are learning to abandon because it does not serve you. It is no longer what humans need to do. In an old energy you literally had the fear of being eaten by the tiger if you ventured out of your cave too long. This is not the case anymore. And I use a metaphor, but you know it's real. Abundance. What if it was an abundance of wisdom? What if you could launch yourself 
in the beginning of the day and say, this day I will make decisions that are wise and beautiful. They will be so wise and so beautiful there will be others who will see it and want it. They will see it as light in me and ask about it. Dear ones, that is your purpose in life. For the year we have said before, do not look at linear actions and performance as why you're here. You are here to exist as a light worker and an old soul with the wisdom that you brought. This is old information. This is not a prophecy. This is a review. But if you haven't heard it before, it's new. The reason for your being here is to exist with the light you carry. So that the earth can see it and change. Not from actions, not from being or doing. From existing. And being part of a scenario. Of that which belongs to the old soul. The one who knows better. The one who's been here and done that. The one who's evolving and bringing light to the planet gently. In ways that are constructive and beautiful. Now let me return to the two. The two has a very strong survival instinct, doesn't it? Duality. You see the results of wrong thinking. You see the results of unbalanced duality everywhere. You see those who have made mistakes who have it completely and totally out of balance to your way of thinking. And so what we say to you is the measurement stick of who has the duality in balance and check truly is where consciousness is going for the human race. And we have told you for years that it's starting to get wiser. It's starting to become more compassionate and more understanding. It is starting to know what it wants. If you look at the last 50 years, it doesn't want war. The civilizations of the planet are done conquering each other. This did not work out. <laughs> And now you're starting to grow up and see it. Generation after generation will begin to understand how it progresses and how it can be enhanced, actually become elegant. But here we are with the two. How does it then work with civilization? All right, you watched your news. You saw how 2015 began. How do you like it? You don't, do you? Some of you have said, if this is any indication of how the year will go, I'd rather just stay in my room. Now let me give you something else to think about. What we would call the consciousness of civilization is going to have to make a realization, and it may be this year, it may be next, it may be next. This is how long it takes to change and to make up your mind. We gave you a prophecy many, many years ago, and it said there might come a day when you really have two kinds of energy on the planet, old and new. And it wouldn't be separated with countries or races or languages. It would be separated by energy, light and dark. This is the way of it, and we have seen it on every single planet that evolved. There's the holdouts. The ones who actually continue to believe that they can conquer one another through hate, fear, killing, drama. That they can have absolute control. That they can scare you with fear so you'll behave and think their way. And the reason they are so sure of it is because it has worked many times.
before. But it's not going to work this time. What you would call terrorist acts are filled with this. There is no compassion. There is a one-sided singular thought it carries duality, which is not just old, it is one-sided, dear ones. They are showing themselves to who they are. You get to see it for the first time. Really see it. They'll kill a group of children and walk away laughing. Because they did their job for what they believe. And civilization up to now has reacted just the way they wanted. Fear, anger, shock, and they got what they came for. To make it even worse, they're willing to die for it. Because there'll be always somebody to take their place and they'll be enhanced in their belief of what they're doing. Now here's what I want to tell you. At some point in time, dear human being, Civilization is going to have to unify itself against them. To take a stand of light. Not country by country. But human by human. Gathering arms together and saying, no. This is not what we want. We want to move forward. We want light on this planet. We want a reason to live. We want love in our lives. We want good things. We want our families to grow up around us and be healthy and happy. We want good schools and good hospitals. We want the, the systems we have in place to work. We want our governments to work. We don't want to be poor. And I want to tell you that when civilization decides that, that's what they're going to get. That's how powerful you are. But right now, right now, You cower and you hide in groups. I want to tell you our prophecy. The duality heightens itself and sharpens itself for civilization. It's going to start to see what's dark and what's light and react. You're going to start seeing organizations. You're going to start seeing those who are banded together all over the planet against what is taking place. If this goes the way the other planets have gone, what you're going to see is slowly you're going to corner that, which is dark. And you're going to corner it in very interesting ways. I want to give you some practical things that we have given you before. I want to tell you that if you kill them back, you're one of them. <laughs> you cannot use dark against dark. It doesn't work. They understand dark a lot more than you do. Practical. In order for them to exist, again, they must fund their work. Part of what civilization is going to demand is that no country can fund them. And if anyone is caught funding them, they will simply be out of the group. And if you're out of the group, you don't trade with anybody, do you? No matter what your riches are alone, if you can't trade with the world, it doesn't do you any good to sit there with all your riches, does it? Do you see where I'm going with this? Civilization can control darkness by controlling how they fund their darkness. You can take away their funding. This has worked in the past. There is a country and some of you will, will know what I speak of who figured this out. There was a time in that country where no city was safe and was literally owned by the drug cartels. Children could not go to school. Mothers and fathers were afraid for their lives to walk out and go to the store <coughs> or even pick vegetables in their own garden. Truth was nowhere. Horror was everywhere. And there were those who said they were doomed because of it. And the criminals had the streets. And if you walked out, and if you had any abundance at all, you were threatened 
kidnapping, death, or worse. Now, I want to tell you what has happened in that country. Because of what they figured out and the approach they took, they were able to corner that, which was dark, and they pushed it aside. Slowly, they pushed it out of their cities. Slowly, they pushed it into the hills. For the last 10 years, it has simply been pushed into a small group into the jungle. And it's so interesting to see what that small group did. That darkness, the group that originally ruled the cities, murdered and hated freely. They decided something. That in their own way, light might be better. And they went to their government, who had pushed them into the corner, and said, we don't know how, but we want peace, and we're done fighting. That, my dear human being, is the future of this planet, if you want it. You can corner them, and you can make them uncomfortable, and you can give them compassion, and they'll start to realize it isn't working. That's a two. A duality that heightens itself to the point where all humanity decides to make a decision. It has happened planet-wide over and over. It is one of the steps we ask you to look for. Every single dark group has a name. It has an acronym, and you heard it over and over. Where are the names and the acronyms of the light groups? Hmm? Well, there's going to be some, if you're brave. That's where civilization can go. It's headed there. 2015 may not have started as bad as you think. It may have set a standard for what you will not accept or put up with. The ones who were killed at their desks came in for that reason. Is this hard for you to imagine? If these potentials are known planet-wide from place to place, and I have told you who you are on the other side of the veil, is it too much for you to think that perhaps those who were killed knew the potential at some level and came to work that day? And I want to tell you where they are right now. They're in a celebration. Can you celebrate it? Death has no sting, for once they returned to my side of the veil, we welcomed them with tears of love. Well done. Watch the planet change because of what you gave today. It's a different paradigm on my side, dear ones. Compassion, benevolence, love. I'll say it again. It's time to get started with the creation of light. It's a good year for a two. <laughs> Let the abundance of this year be an understanding. Let the abundance be in the wisdom that you would have regarding that which you are presented with. Wisdom. Based upon that which you are receiving through the intuitive self. Not the survival self. Let it be so. I am crying in love with humanity, and for good reason. <laughs> and so it is.